Your iPhone has a dynamic island. Kind of hard to see in this picture, but it's there. Your Mac doesn't have a dynamic island. It's just got a notch. At least that was the case until Alcove popped on the scene. Alcove brings the dynamic island vibe to your Mac. And you know what? It's kind of cool looking. It's actually pretty brilliant. It should be because the dynamic island was one of the things that was sort of a jaw dropper when Apple announced it. And now a really clever developer is taking it upon themselves to bring it to the Mac now. If you think about it, what's clever and cool about the dynamic island is that it makes something that otherwise wouldn't be all that functional. It was just kind of camouflaging, hiding some technology under it for the camera, very functional. It's a storage compartment basically, and Apple's use it as such. It's like a drawer or a black hole kind of, except you can get things back out. They don't just disappear forever when they go in. And it can display notifications, system information, and do so, quote unquote, dynamically. It can change, it morphs, the animations are great. And all of that has sort of made its way to Alcove. You get the fluid transitions, the instant notifications, live activities, swipe gestures. It's got some surprises. Basically, it makes your notch functional <laughs> over on the Mac. And honestly, when Apple put this in the, the latest Macs, whenever it came, it was kind of like, hmm, that's weird. I wish that it wasn't there. But if it has to be there, I guess Apple did a pretty good job of working with the menu items and stuff and everything kind of maps around that unusable chunk pretty decently. Like you could live with it. And it was something that I think as Mac users, we don't really notice. You notice it in the pictures and then you get it and it's like, it disappears. You're not even thinking about it. But here, someone was like, let's change that. I've seen it in practice before. And now you can see, you can come up here and pause music, play music you can see what's playing. In other words, it turned this previously unused real estate into something much more functional. It's hard to imagine that Apple hasn't already done this themselves. I don't know if partly that's because they're like, you know, uh, we're either planning on it, but we've just been slow about it. It's gonna be like the biggest new thing <laughs> on some upcoming Mac, although someone beat them to the punch. Or if they're like, hey, we're gonna get rid of that anyways, we know in a model or two, oftentimes Apple will come out with like a base design for something, sort of iterate on it for two more times so that you get like three years out of that base design and then move on to something that feels actually quite a bit different. I don't know if we're just waiting for that before Apple will do it, I have no idea, but it's much more functional now. So partly I wonder if this isn't gonna be sort of a short-lived app, I don't know. But I mean, I'm enthusiastic about it. I know it's 16 bucks or whatever, 17 bucks. Um, but you know, I, I do believe developers should get paid for their hard work. And maybe they were like, I don't know how much of an audience there is for this. Hey, if you're not already signed up for the newsletter, you gotta do it. It comes out on Fridays, it's free. It won't waste your time. Fill you in on everything Apple related in 30 seconds or less. Plus, comes with free wallpaper. And if you didn't know, I've got some courses available online. New one on AI coming up shortly but I've got a course to teach you how to be productive finally. A course that goes way beyond the basics of Apple's free form app. A course that'll teach you how to shoot pro iPhone video if you're a beginner and plenty more. Check it out, it's all linked up down below. And let's all be grateful that it's not just a subscription. I'm tired of all these little subscriptions for things that are like, it's really cool. And you see it's like $1.99 a month or seven bucks a month and you're like, forget it. There's no way I'm gonna pay that and pay it on an ongoing basis for such a small thing, right? <laughs> that you may forget about. That's what I think some developers are hoping for. So I'd rather pay a little bit more and just be done with it, have it be mine forever, actually. Is it a bit of a gimmick? Is it gonna be distracting? Does it bring some clutter? I mean, it's sort of a gimmick, but it's a useful gimmick. Apple, this is the whole debate when the Dynamic Island debuted originally on the iPhone. And all the Android people were like, such a gimmick, so dumb. And I think admittedly, it, it has that gimmick-like feel to it. I think we all thought that. But I don't think, and, and in practice, it didn't end up feeling like stupid, like it was some scammy thing. It felt like really well thought out. And um, I, I don't think it's a gimmick. So it's no on the gimmick for me. I think it could enhance productivity because anything that lets you accomplish something without breaking your flow or getting out of the screen that you're in actually can be very good. We talked about this in my productivity course, which is linked up down below. For me, anytime something can get more immersive, and meaning I can immerse myself more in a task without having the focus broken. I think that's a positive, that's a good. In other words, it lets me kind of do some multitasking. I can control something else. I can be notified about something else while monotasking. I'm concentrating on one thing, that's the mono, but multi being able to accomplish things in other apps without having to get out of the screen that I'm in. So we don't have to spend too much time on it. I like to find apps, I always have. You can go back and search for daily tech, daily T-E-K-K. -K. 
iPad apps in particular. Whenever I run into something, I make a note of it. And this one seemed like it was pretty cool and I wanted to share it. So let me know, do you think that this is cool? Is it something you're gonna get? Are you not really interested? Um, what do you think about the price? And also this developer has another cool app. It's called Clack. And um, it's just kind of a fun sound that you get with every keystroke. I don't know if you've messed around with it. It's been around for a little bit. You can actually change it up a little bit. So I think uh, fun to explore what people are making. This developer has some cool stuff worth supporting. So you can try Alcove at tryalcove.com. And if you're interested in Clack, that is tryclack.com, K-L-A-C-K as well.